This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. When you sign up at curiositystream.com slash HAI, you'll also get access to Nebula, the streaming video platform that HAI is a part of. Let's go back to 1957. This guy was president, these guys were launching this thing, all of these guys were starting to form this, this guy was doing a lot of this, to which teens reacted like this, and most importantly, this guy, who wrote this book, had just won a massive victory thanks to these guys. Such guy was, if you don't know, Ron Hubbard, a science fiction writer who wrote a book called Dianetics, which became a bestseller, but instead of doing what most successful fiction authors do and write a bad sequel or spin it off into a direct-to-video movie, Hubbard decided to spin his book off into something much more profitable, a religion which he named the Church of Scientology. Now, this year, 1957, was a big one for Ron because that's when the IRS recognized Scientology as a religion, thus granting the church tax-exempt status. But then, in 1967, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. If by Fire Nation you mean the IRS, and by attacked you mean remove Scientology's tax-exempt status. The IRS claimed that the Church of Scientology wasn't a religious nonprofit, but was engaged in commercial activity to financially benefit Hubbard, most notably through real estate deals. So, desperate to regain their tax exempt status, the church did the reasonable thing stop profiting off their property, stop funneling money to Hubbard, and started a less exploitative, more charitable. I'm just kidding, they sent spies to infiltrate the US government. The plan was called Operation Snow White, and it was run by the totally not suspicious sounding Scientology Guardian's Office, which was created in 1966 to do the totally not suspicious sounding job of, quote, protecting the interests of Scientology. Operation Snow White specifically can trace its roots to Guardian Order 732, written by Ron Hubbard, which called for the, quote, removal and correction of erroneous Scientology files, which was code for files that say true but unflattering things about Scientology, like, for example, that they believe all of the world's non-Scientology religions are false memories planted in humans by Xenu, the alien god. You know, normal religion stuff. While there were thousands of agents, the two best known were these guys, Gerald Wolf and Michael Meisner. In 1973, Wolf and Meisner got jobs as clerk typists at the DC IRS office in the division that dealt with religious tax exemptions. They started off by illegally copying files from the office and funneling them to the church, but soon graduated to big boy crimes like forgery and breaking and entering, which they did by making fake high-level IRS ID cards, then sneaking into the Office of International Operations and the federal courthouse in DC to steal more documents. On both occasions, they were questioned by suspicious observers, once by a janitor, once by a librarian, and once even by the FBI, who the librarian had called, but by the grace of Xenu the alien god, they managed to talk their way out of it using a combination of fake ID badges, cover stories, and being white. Eventually, though, it turned out that turning your fake religion into a secretive, exploitative, mafia-like crime cult wasn't the type of smooth sailing, no-drawbacks plan that you'd expect. Soon, the Guardian office got worried that Agent Meisner would go to the police, and so just like any normal church would, they locked him up in a secret facility in California and put him under 24-7 surveillance. But it turns out that spies tend to be good at escaping, and after three months, Meisner eluded his captors, called the FBI, turned himself in, and told them everything, which led to the biggest FBI raid in US history when 156 agents descended on Scientology's Los Angeles office, and in addition to finding e-meters and sci-fi books, they also found 48,000 incriminating documents, bugs, fake passes, lockpicks, secret codes, basically everything you'd find in James Bond's suitcase, except instead of being owned by a secret agent, they were owned by a pretend church that teaches people that humans are ancient aliens living inside of bodies that were evolved from clams. The materials recovered in the raid revealed a ton more insane details about Operation Snow White. That an agent successfully bugged an IRS office where they discussed the church's tax-exempt status, that they'd got agents into the US Coast Guard Intelligence Agency, the DEA, and the American Medical Association, and even that Operation Snow White had branches in over 30 countries with codenames like Project Apple for France, Project Mirror for Portugal, and Project Witch for the UK, because what's an international criminal conspiracy without adorable matching nicknames? Later court documents suggested that across all of these projects, the Church of Scientology, a pretend church based on a sci-fi book, likely had as many as 5,000 secret agents infiltrating governments and organizations around the world, which is definitely bad, but is also admittedly an impressive use of science fiction. After all, Star Trek got turned into a so-so movie franchise, Dianetics got turned into one of the largest international government infiltrations in world history. 
The raid also showed that the Guardian office was additionally behind an enormous number of other bizarre conspiracies, including an attempt to trick the government into organizing a press conference held by a cat and a plot to frame the mayor of Clearwater, Florida for murder, but thanks to the raid, the plots were foiled and all Scientology does these days is hold dozens of people in an illegal prison camp and make John Travolta do even weirder stuff than he did before. Speaking of things that may or may not be a tax scam, Tom Scott has a new game show. It's called Money, and I am on it. Over five rounds, Tom subjects me, Mia Mulder, Sophie Ward, Rowan Francis, and Mike Boyd to five games, and then at the end, something happens. Sounds great, right? Well, like all great things, it's available exclusively on Nebula, home to my and plenty of other educational creators' big, ambitious projects. What makes a lot of this possible is Nebula's bundle deal with CuriosityStream, the streaming platform home to thousands of fascinating documentaries and nonfiction shows. By signing up at curiositystream.com slash HAI, you'll get access to both for a year for just $20. That's truly the best deal in streaming, and it helps support HAI and plenty of other independent educational creators.